You know what they say, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. I've been reviewing OnePlus phones since the 3T and every single one was marred by the word, but and the infamous for the price catchphrase. The phone is great, but it lacks water resistance, or it's water resistant, but it lacks a certification, or the display is 90 hertz, but it's very dim, or warp charge is super fast, but there's no wireless charging, or the camera has improved, but it's only good for the price. We power users are like Darth Vader. We hold any company accountable for their promise, even remotely while staying at home. I know, I love the meme, but point is, I think OnePlus got tired of having its strategy be considered an excuse. The result? Well, this is the OnePlus 8 Pro, the company's showcase of what it's like to lead with speed, and what I'd like to call the company's first ever flagship that's still priced a tad below than the phones it's trying to compete with. This phone actually felt more baked than the OnePlus 8 when I first started testing. It received the same amount of software updates, actually an extra one a bit after. So let's see if it's actually now ready for the major leagues. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our review of the OnePlus 8 Pro after pretty much two months of use. Launching two flavors of the OnePlus 8 is rather interesting, where those of you that are price-centric, you've got the OnePlus 8 flagship killer, and those of you that have been begging for a flagship OnePlus without compromise, there's the OnePlus 8 Pro. Sadly, I feel that this is going to be the tougher sell. It's not sold on any US carrier, so it's limited in exposure for those people that are used to the galaxies and the iPhones. And then you also have got the problem that once you add subsidies, it only dilutes that $100 to $200 price difference to a couple of bucks every month. I'm gonna try to narrow down the reasons why you should consider this phone over any Galaxy or iPhone, and I'll also tell you what things you should think twice about. The first thing to admire is that this phone might look like the OnePlus 7T Pro, but it's actually quite different. Just like Samsung refined the S10 to only look like the S9 but feel different, it's the same story here. It's hard to show this on camera, but this looks like a far more elegant finish, and the fingerprints are no longer an issue with this new tone of matte glass. Fan favorites like the three-way mute slider also make a much appreciated comeback, and somehow this phone manages to be three millimeters taller, two millimeters narrower, a hair thinner, and about five grams lighter than its predecessor, all while having a 10% larger battery, and even the coil for reverse wireless charging that we've been begging for. And then this is not just any wireless charging as well. Warp Charge 30T was already the king of speedy wired top-ups, going up from zero to 50% in around 23 minutes, and now we're gonna give it the crown for its wireless counterpart. The Warp Charge 30 wireless charger is optional, but for the typical $70 that most other fancy she pads will cost you, this stand goes from 0 to 50% in a similar 30 minutes. In typical OnePlus fashion, these are also not just any set of internals. It's powered by the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, more than enough of the fastest RAM and storage in the industry based on the tier you pick, the latest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards, and finally, like finally, IP68 water and dust resistance. Actually, if you flip this phone around, there are a boatload of other certifications like HDR10+, and A+, on DisplayMate, in addition to SGS Eye Care certification, and you know what? but I'm not gonna argue. Colors on this display are vibrant, and the level of detail is well up there with any competing device in its category. At 6.78 inches diagonal and an insane 1300 nits of brightness, and also 10-bit color depth, this is the most beautiful display that I've ever seen on a OnePlus phone. I won't be the judge of calling it better than what we see on a Galaxy S20, but unless Samsung removes the limitations on its phone, 120Hz at Quad HD Plus resolution is technically superior. There's a new MEMC algorithm allowing you to boost video reproduction up to 120 frames per second for fans of augmented motion, but I'll admit that I switched it off. It's as controversial as the curves and the lack of palm rejection. 
but at least they lead to more immersive content consumption once you match the performance with the dual firing speakers. The Snapdragon 865 gives this phone the current specs and 5 120 hertz refresh rate is one of those things you won't know you're missing until you do. You don't have to be a power user to notice when your device lags, so be warned, once you try Oxygen OS on this display, it's gonna be very hard to go back. OnePlus has been perfecting its skin on Android for years, so much so that regardless of how much it looks like stock, it's so much better than that. See, this is not like the Pixel, where you're forced to get used to the new gestures. With Oxygen OS, you can pick whichever option you want. You don't even have to choose if you'd prefer the Amazon Assistant or the Google Assistant, as you can set the former to the power button and the latter to the gesture. You don't have to put up with the half-baked feed on the launcher, because the Google feed on the launcher is now available here by default. You can control the accents of the buttons or their design, and go for a blend of dark or light elements on the UI. About the only thing that I wish was here was an automatic way to enable dark theme between sunrise and sunset. Other than that, you've got Zen mode to disconnect you from your phone every now and then, reading mode to make this display more apt for a book while you commute, or lots of gaming features that'll help you take advantage of all the hardware tucked in. My only word of advice is that you don't push the 120 hertz with Quad HD Plus resolution. I mean, sure the phone can do it, but I did notice a good hit in battery life. Even at max refresh rate, Full HD Plus is more than enough on the screen size, and it really helped me get through a day of heavy use every single time. So, what's missing? I mean, we finally get that OnePlus 8 flagship, but what's the catch? Actually, there are three, and one of them is mostly a US thing. You can't really buy this phone on any carrier. For some reason, you can only find the OnePlus 8, which means that if you depend on subsidies or carrier-specific bundles, this is not your phone. And that actually leads me to the second reason, and it's the way this phone does 5G. It doesn't really work like your typical Galaxy S20 Plus or Ultra, where they support both flavors of 5G, or pretty much all three if you consider the low band, the mid band, and the high band on Verizon. Sadly, this phone only does sub-6, so if you're planning to use it on T-Mobile, you'll be fine, but it won't support the higher band millimeter wave on Verizon, which should be fine right now, but if you plan to hold on to this phone for more than a year, then you might end up with not necessarily the more future-proof solution with this device. Third, let's talk about the camera. It is better than before, but it's still not great. Now, in its defense, even if it hasn't received much recognition, you have to admit that the spec sheet makes this quite the monster. I mean, the main camera sensor size is almost as large as that on the Galaxy S20 Ultra, and larger than what's available on the Galaxy S20 Plus, and then it provides a decent telephoto camera, in addition to switching the formula of the S20 Ultra, and probably using the same 48 megapixel sensor for the ultra wide instead of the telephoto, pretty much acknowledging user preference. The only problem, sadly, is implementation. Software updates have really made miracles with some of my original complaints, but not all of them. Colors during the day are as expected, with very good saturation in most scenarios, though reds do seem to be a bit too intense for my taste. But then you struggle with the problem of having such a large sensor match with such a sharp aperture, as keeping subjects in focus in a shot can be a struggle the closer you get. Take a step back, switch to the ultra wide, and you'll be pleased with very little distortion. And I gotta say, this telephoto is not just sharp, but good enough to go closer, though once you get the 30X, the photo is pretty much useless. Also, try to keep a steady hand with it, as keeping focus can prove to be a chore. Even the super macro mode that uses a standard camera and a motor provides an insane amount of detail, where you remember just how bad the OnePlus 8 was with its separate camera. Now, the elephant in the room is this fourth camera sensor, which provides a color filter camera that enables photochrome mode. OnePlus claims that you'll get some very neat infrared shots, and I would agree if the detail wasn't so bad and focus wasn't so far. And sure, it does serve as an x-ray for certain thin plastics, and even to see the hidden camera modules on your Pixel. But trust me, this is one of those things you'll forget, and I do even hear that certain countries are blocking this feature. My biggest problem is that there are good and bad changes for low light. If you stick to the regular camera, you'll get some very good results, to the point where the camera can even balance and show the crescent moon. The problem is that the wide angle was better than it is now, with more grain and artifacts showing here and there when compared to previous software updates. 
Now, portraits do see an improvement in less of the aura glow that we saw before, but I'd recommend that you stick to the wide version as the close-up requires you to step back a lot. Detail seems pretty much the same, but then one of the things that made a dramatic improvement is selfies and selfie portraits. OnePlus has always provided washed out results, and yet now I see detail and skin tones that I had not seen before. And then last but not least, the one thing that never gets improved and we wish it did was video. Yes, you can do 4K at 60 frames per second, but the typical warping and more ray of the Android codec will follow you along as the phone tries to stabilize the shot. I'm not saying that the results are bad, but definitely not the quality you get from, say, an iPhone. And in that same sense, selfie video is once again washed out, lacking dynamic range and capped at 1080p, even with enough megapixels to go further. To conclude, there is a lot to say about OnePlus and its first attempt to make a true flagship. I have to praise the efforts in not just giving us a great display, but one of the best of the year. We're not just getting wireless charging, but the fastest ever done. We're not getting something close to stock Android with Oxygen OS, but an implementation that's truly better. Match all that with the spec frenzy mentality we've known OnePlus 4, and then complete the equation with water resistance, and this is almost the whole package. Really what's missing here is two things, one being the implementation of 5G for those of you that are planning to hold on to this phone for longer than a year, as sure, right now it'll work on sub six and you'll be fine, but eventually carriers will move to support all three bands and this phone is not equipped for them. And second would be the camera because we do have a lot of great hardware here, but the software just doesn't live up to all that speed in the numbers. That being said, I have no problem in recommending the OnePlus 8 Pro. It is not the perfect phone, but hey, no phone is. I know many of you really don't care about 5G just yet, and I don't have to tell you how well this camera performs if you install the Gcam APK from XDA developers. Point is, most of what's missing has a solution, and everything else is here. The OnePlus 8 Pro is almost the whole package, and still manages to be priced for a lot less than flagships that still don't hold a candle against it. But your opinion is the most important one. Let us know what you think about the OnePlus 8 Pro in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow me on my personal handles to see me play around with this phone at home. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.